Justin Pastores is an amazing artist who is fluent in not one, but several art mediums. From watercolor to charcoal, there's pretty much nothing left for Justin to explore. Oh, and did you know that aside from art making, he's a father of two and has another job to worry about? Yeah, he's pretty awesome. Join us today as we talk about pros of having multiple sketchbooks in use, balancing family, a career, and art making on the side, getting over the fear of breaking into a new sketchbook, and tips on how to hit the ground running when starting with a new art medium. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etrelab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etre, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. I've known you for a while, but it's actually the first time we are speaking with each other. I'm super happy uh, that I'm finally getting to meet you a little bit. I have a lot of art related questions because I, I love your art. But before we get there, can you give us a little background of where you come from and when did art become a thing for you? Uh, yeah, sure. So I am... Well, I'm from the States here in California, Bay Area. I um, I am the youngest of, uh, of uh, I have three older brothers. So I'm the youngest boy. Um, and they're like, like way, a little bit way older. Like at least, like the one closest to me is eight years and then 12 and then 14 years apart. Um, so I first, I think I got way into drawing when I saw one of my older brothers who was already in high school when I was like maybe four or something. Um, doing, you know, his class assignments. Um, and, and he was really into drawing and painting then as well. So I think the very, the, one of the earlier memories I, I can remember is like him drawing a Ninja Turtle, Raphael Ninja Turtle pencil on Bristol. And it was like very smooth and everything. So I think that was probably like the earliest images I saw. And then like when I look back at like family videos and stuff, you know, I would I think they would, um, you know, record what they're doing and stuff. And I would see like the drawings that they did on the wall. And, and um, so, yeah, since then, I think I've just been drawing and they would get me little sketchbooks and I would draw all my favorite things off all my favorite cartoons growing up. And it was always something I was um, interested in doing. Like, so that's why I was really terrible in school because I would just draw <laughs> in like, on my on my on my homework, I would never finish the class projects as I just wanted to draw my own things. Oh my um, God. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, went through all of that, but I never got in really like seriously interested in making art. Um, maybe until like junior college or something. So hmm. like earlier twenties, cause then I started to, you know, when you're getting that age, you're like wondering, what am I going to do? <laughs> Yeah. And like I spent all this time like with these interests and like but I never took it like to the next level um so that's when I like started okay maybe I'll, I'll I'll kind of go along this route and then um you know enter uh, uh junior college um you know I would run into the art department there I would take a few classes and then I saw um our, our teacher there uh Charlie Chavez shout out to Charlie um he is the printmaking um, and I think like also like head of the art department there, but he would take his watercolor class out and, you know, paint plain air, paint outdoors. And I'd never seen that before. You know, I, I was just really accustomed to just drawing and cartoons and things. And so um, I would try to make it an effort to go and catch their class just to like watch because mm -hmm. he would just out there, he would just, he would just paint. And I thought it was like the most amazing thing. And, um, but I never got to take his watercolor class because uh, it was always in a time where it, it conflicts with me waking up or. Oh, <laughs> or, or OK. I'm like, oh, or, probably or, like, yeah, the mandatory like, classes and things that you really had to do. No, no. Me waking up. That's 
I can relate yeah. to that. I can't. <laughs> oh yeah, because he had his watercolor class like early in the morning, and um, you know, usually all the, those were all the classes that would begin. Parking would be insane, and then I just could never really get there. So I would always catch like the tail end and just watch him like paint the rest of his paintings, and and then. Um, but yeah, I think since then I got I was really attracted to watercolor since then, and I just started. Uh, trying to learn how to paint um, uh, more af- after seeing, watching him and, and, and um, discovering that medium more. Mm-hmm. Early 20s. And when did you, because now you do that, you do ink, you do gouache, you do a lot of different mediums. So when did, I mean, and what were you studying? How does junior college work? Um, you know, you go there for two years and then you would transfer out. Um, mm-hmm. You kind of just go take all like the prereqs of everything, prerequisite uh, classes, um, no, you earn up enough like credits and then you get to transfer to a university and then, um, oh. you know, go on, go on there. So, that, so yeah, I was kind of a bonehead, right? Like I wanted to go into animation I was like, oh yeah, I want to do that. Cause I, you know, growing up, we watched a lot of Disney films and, and, and other stuff here too. And it really influenced my brothers. Um, but then like, uh, uh, I didn't know how to like get in, into like a university that, that would, um, focus on on that uh, on that major so i was like okay man i just got a, i just got all my stuff let me go and apply for the animation major but later on just you know later on discovered that oh wait you have to take all the other courses in between and then and then also that the uh, the major is like very competitive mm-hmm. and then so it's like oh okay that didn't work out and then i just went to the fine art route and so started but were you happy to yeah. go to the fine art route or was it like oh, i'll just do it because at least it's art related did you did you know what you were getting into um a little bit of both i think i i um you know yeah i was like kind of like bummed like oh man maybe um I, like i should have researched more or um but i was happy where where it ended up i think mm-hmm. I'm trying to think about like, because I felt like my art skills weren't that strong at the time either. So like, I felt like going towards this other route, I can really focus more on like fundamentals and, and, you know, discover more, more, uh, more on painting. So that, that really uh, took a, a different turn. I, so I still have a lot of love and interest in, in the animation world. I took an animation class that like one of the prereqs was taking 2D and I realized hey, I don't really like doing this. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So I, I thought about like, Oh, what would I, what I would even be interested in doing there? And it would be like set to my skills now, which is like, you know, doing backgrounds or something. So that's mm-hmm. when like plein air kind of molded and, um, you know, meshed in with me and, mm-hmm. and also like kind of fine art uh, route to just being, um, exploring more painting. Yeah. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense. Um, I interviewed uh, Andrew Pena a long time ago, one of the earliest episodes, and he was talking about, you know, he loves plein air, he loves gouache, and he's a background painter for animation industry. So that, you know, kind of makes sense. Okay, so you were in fine art, and you knew you liked landscape painting, you liked plein air, uh, you liked watercolor up until now. So what happened then? From then and there, okay. So what, what was going on? Um, you know, yeah, I was doing a lot of like little little shows, either group shows or, um, you know, two people shows. Uh, eventually got um, like little residencies here and there. Um, uh, had a little art studio, and then kids, <laughs> and, then, and then so that stuff kind of slowed down. I took up a teaching gig, um, so I teach teach kids. Um, um, at a, a local art little studio here, mm-hmm. and that's been my my gig for a while. Um, then and, and then I went back and I got okay. I got another studio. Let's go and crank out some work and let's uh, do some more things. And then the second kid came, and then wow. <laughs> they're slowing down. <laughs> so now I'm just like okay. I'm just working my sketchbooks, and then I'm happy with what like just producing work whenever I can. Because you know, as you know, and you're a new mom and you know, time is like super limited and um, it's just hard to, uh, you know, keep the ball rolling with that. Yes. So from going, old, for me, you're... going big works and then going down to small, very personal stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your oldest is four today on the day of this recording. He's turning four today. 
yeah, greeting my, my son a happy fourth birthday today. What's his name? Today. Alexander. Alex, Alexander. Cute name. And your baby girl, how old is she? Uh, she's going to be two in July. Oh, my God. So two years yeah. apart. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's, yeah. I just have one. Very young. So I'm not even, I don't even know what comes after where I am right now. But even though you're a father <laughs> of two very young children, they are very close together, like in age, you still make art like, so yeah, I'm going through your feed. And when I first found out about you, you were doing amazing watercolor work. And then I found out that you also did gouache and you were amazing at both. And then I saw you doing a lot of fundamental drawing, which you rock at. And now I see also a lot of great inks. So that begs the question, what is your favorite medium? Oh, um, they're all very different. Mm -hmm. I jump around, you know, I, you can, as you like what you just described. So like I, um, whatever I have interest at the time, I think, I, I guess watercolor and gouache, I guess watercolor, since I've been doing that a little bit longer than the, all the other mediums, um, mm -hmm. besides drawing. Um, mm -hmm. cause I feel like I don't have a good grasp on it yet. It's always like a, something that I feel like I got and then it kind of goes away and then I go, Oh, oh man, come back here. Let me keep, let me keep, uh, you know, working, working it out with you. Um, so I think that one is, but you know, I, whatever, um, whatever holds my interest at the time and also kind of what, um, what I can do, you know, like the drawings are really fast, like mm -hmm. the ink drawings they're just, I, I did those during the inktober, um, thing. So, yeah. uh, yeah so it's uh i try to if there's like a theme going on i try to write on that for a while like the inktober or there's another one coming up um playing april from the warrior painters so um you know i might switch gears and start trying to hop on that right and then uh, and then they you know that you have to do like a painting every day for the month of april mm -hmm. uh, so i'm gonna kind of pick my tools there so yeah you know my favorite medium it's really all of them, but I think if it boils down, it's probably watercolor. I do miss oils, and and um, but I just don't have the like space to do that. Also, it sucks cleaning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the smell of the cleaning uh, detergent is just like way too much. Okay, I loved your answer because um, not all every artist, of course, but a lot of artists have a very clear preferred medium, and really focus on that and grow their skills on that specific medium or one or two usually within the same range like wash and watercolor because they're both water based or uh, maybe charcoal and pastel like um, dry pastel because it's not the same but it's kind of similar you do everything and you do everything really well and i love that you just said that it really depends on the season of your life that you're in and the time that you have available and you are creating despite having two young kids and you were creating, uh, even when the kids were little, you were able to create. And I know that you are a very present father. I mean, if anyone goes through your Instagram and sees your stories, you are always there for your kids. So tips on energy or time management, call it what you will, to get art done when you just can't do anything. Man, that is... Um... That the tips I'll have are probably won't work for everyone. Um, yeah, that, just tell us your secret. Like, how do you do this, man? How? <laughs> I used to just stay up late at night. I think I've heard like other people also do the same. You know, they would um, kids would go to bed, mm -hmm. spouse would go to bed, and that would be your time to do something, mm -hmm. or you know, try to work out something with your your spouse to kind of you know, get a, a time frame in there. Like she's like my wife, she's always going, um, you know, she needs her time to work out and jog mm -hmm. or, or do something, you know, clear her head from, um, and, you know, take care of her body and stuff like that. So of mm -hmm. course you just have to work out something. And if, if, um, and she would do the same for me. Like if, if you want painting time, just let me know. Um, but you know, I'll just say, I'll just, I'll just stay up. <laughs> you guys go to sleep. That'll be my, my, my quiet time to kind of do things. Um, but, you know, that doesn't work for everyone because everyone has 
you know, their own crazy schedules. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's not um, like I did write a bunch of blog posts about time and energy management because I'm a great advocate of you can manage your energy, but not time because time passes no matter what. You can't manage it. You can't leash it. It's a wild beast. It just keeps going forward. It never goes backwards. Yeah. But for you, I love that you are uh, an night owl. So, okay. So you uh, work on your art at a later time after your kids go to bed. So, and the art that you do, do you do like one full painting in like three hours? Do you do something small in one hour? How do you, if, if you have a full painting to do, how long does it take you? And how do you break it apart? How do you make it work? Because sometimes people think they have to sit down for a long period of time to get something done. When in reality, maybe just a little bit of time is enough. So what are your thoughts on that? Well... Um, so I work now in just sketchbooks and so all, cause I can't, you know, um, uh, go out and do paintings. I can't, um, work big anymore. Mm-hmm. So everything is just in books now. And, um, you know, I usually just usually takes, I usually try to just finish it right then and there. So mm-hmm. up to three hours I'll spend. So mainly it's just like maybe average is like two hours I'll spend on something. Um, yeah. So I, I, I kind of just just work from the little books and have everything compact. Like I have, so I have different books for different things. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Okay, please talk a little bit more about that. How oh, so? Okay, yeah. Um, I have uh, a sketchbook of. I just started this last year. It's mm-hmm. dedicated to both my kids. So I'll just do portraits of them, and 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 in individual sketchbooks for every month. And I'll write something on the back telling what happened during that month. And wow. so um, so that's like my drawing for the day. And then also the drawing for, for something for my kids for, for the actually for the month. And then I can put that okay. away and then work on something else. And then so that takes care of like, okay, I've done my drawing goal for the month. Now I can touch something else like and painting. What <laughs> medium do you do the portraits in? Oh, they're different every time um so they can either be drawings or watercolor or gouache sometimes i'll mix them all together it's a good time for me to actually like experiment and and um play with mediums and because you know they get to i don't want them to see like just a formal portrait throughout you know uh, it'll be nice to see like variations of you know what i can do and or just what i'm feeling at the time but but lately they just all been formal because i don't want to mess up their little few faces Oh my god, but, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is a great idea. I really want to do that now as well. Okay. So that's like yeah. a monthly goal and you allow yourself to yeah. use whatever medium you feel like using. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. What other sketchbooks yeah, do you have? I, I have a watercolor sketchbook. So I use the Etcher one. I've been using those. Um so that one yeah, it's just I just kind of focus on watercolor for that. I have another one that's maybe focused on more on gouache. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So I try I try to have it, it. It doesn't always work out that way though. Like sometimes, okay, this will all just be figures for this book and all monochromatic for this book. And then I think after a while I get a little bored and and then paint something else or I'll write mm-hmm. stuff and like oh well that was a that was a. Um, you know, I tried. <laughs> yeah, that was a great so. 10 pages of monochromatic drawings, but uh, I'm starting to have nightmares in black and white, so this has to stop. Yeah. Okay. Or, or I, have, I, have another, I have another book where it's like, you know, I started off with just drawing like my family, and then it mm-hmm. turned to me and my kids drawing together on it. Aww. And then I was, it, now it's kind of just theirs. And then, or it's, it's ours, so, you know, they do their little stamps on there. My son would ask me to draw Pokemon and I would draw for him and then, you know, they get to color it and stuff. So So it's amazing to me that you divide your workload between your sketchbooks so each one has their own purpose, yet you're not too hard on yourself with it has to be like this or else. Or else I'm going to, you know, chastise myself like Mia culpa. For not for not doing what I yeah. should. I love how free this all is. It, like there's a lot of freedom between the rules. Oh yeah, I was gonna say as it should be, because then you know how I mentioned I only work in sketchbooks, so I'm trying to treat them as like almost like finished pieces or at least high quality sketches. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and I also have to remember that, wait, these are also just sketches too. Like the, you, these are just like things you can write notes on and things you can grow from. So I try to have not to be like too perfect on the books because they should be like, you know, just a part of your art path, I guess, mm -hmm. and how you're feeling. Yeah, Do you ahead. ever Sorry. had that, um, oh my God, a new sketchbook. Oh my God, I have to start somewhere feeling and how do you deal with that i usually draw a self-portrait on the first page mainly sometimes um but i feel like that's like the the a nice introduction into the thing you know i i know myself enough to like feel like i don't have to like mess up on my face because you know <laughs> uh, no, no but it's a good way to experiment because you know you one you know you get to practice drawing portraits you get to draw you get to uh, draw yourself and if you mess up on yourself it's no big deal because you know how you look like and it's your time to you know play around with that um so i'm actually get really excited when i get a new sketchbook because like oh i get to you know break in the first page i remember feeling you know way back then like oh i gotta skip like the first two pages and then work somewhere in the middle i think everyone has that little experience before in the yeah. past and so no one wants to touch the first page, you know, it's like, why? And you look at people's sketchbooks, why is the page empty? But like, you know, in my head, I'm like, I know why the page is empty. You didn't want to ruin your book. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I try to have it like the first page be something like familiar. Yeah. So it takes the pressure off because you've done it so many times. That's a really smart uh, way to go about it. How long usually does a sketchbook last? Oh, I don't know. Because that depends on the time too, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't. I don't work on them every day and they can stretch. So it can go on for like a few months, six months, maybe. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. With, with, with the, with my kids sketchbooks, it lasts for a year. So, you know, mm -hmm. cause I do a drawing every month and then year gone. And then, um, yeah. So maybe like six months or so, but of course, like I mentioned earlier, like uh, schedule gets in the way or, you know, you have different priorities. So, yeah, and you do create every night. Is that something that you never break? Like that a rule? Oh no, that breaks. Yeah, yeah. I don't get to create every every night. So just whenever either I have the energy to do so or um or the drive to do so. Um I think the last so the, I think the last painting I did or last some whatever thing I did was probably a few nights ago. And then uh, leading up until now, I've just been sleeping in or playing games on my phone. <laughs> Which is also really good. I mean, you have to do non-related art stuff, I think, in order to keep the creativity in check sometimes. Um, I mean, I remember being in a big art slump and I was forcing myself to draw and uh, I it was not coming out the way I wanted and I started questioning myself, like, am I even cut out to make art because I can't do anything? And then... I went out for a walk and I played some games and all of a sudden I really wanted to draw again. Uh, so I think doing other creative um, activities can also fool your uh, desire to draw. I don't know, at least for me it worked. No, no, that's very important for everyone, I think. Because um, then other things will give you inspiration and drive to you know, go back to creating. Like what you mentioned, you go, you, you, you go on hikes beautiful way to get inspired by nature or or you know either by like visually or by sounds and smell so it's a really nice thing i haven't gone hiking in a long time we should be i should be going but i am afraid of my kids falling down or something so <laughs> oh. yeah uh, but uh I, I you know that that's one of the things i miss or like you know going going and watching you know a movie or something and um yeah very important because there is there's definitely um burnouts Mm -hmm. And a way to kind of uh, work around it is to do other creative things outside of what you're mainly doing um, creatively. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the last time the last time you were having a burnout? No. <laughs> Good. Um, I'm glad because I'm like I'm thinking. I, yeah. I mean, one way that I know that people go through burnouts, one of the many ways, is to try a new medium. But I'm like. How do you try a new medium? Because you pretty much use every medium. Oh, well, you know, um, well, for me, I guess, I, 
yeah, I, I, I work on a, a new medium like for a little bit and then, you know, I'll give it a break. So that break allows me to like get some space between. And when I come back, it's like, oh, wait, how do I do this again? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a... exactly what I wanted to ask you. So, so I, I was saying a while ago, um, an artist, if they paint a lot in watercolor and gouache, they get really good at it, even though they can probably use like oil pastels to make a really nice looking uh, piece. They are the strongest at watercolor and gouache because that's what they spend most of their time at. Um, you spend your time at whatever medium you feel like you want to explore and you're really good at them. So do you have that feeling like, even though probably you use watercolor the most because it's the one medium you've been doing the longest and the one you like a better best, do you ever feel like, gosh, I haven't touched charcoal for in so long. How do I do this and how do you get past that barrier, let's say? Oh, yeah. Um, I think you have to go back to fundamentals a little bit. Mm. Like there's a lot of different ways of doing some things, but there's always like kind of core techniques that really help with mm. that reaches everything. I guess like. Especially if you're gonna draw like a, an apple or something, um, I kind of focus my attention on it being round or finding shapes into there and mm -hmm. following shape direction. That usually works with every. I know there's a lot of core little things for everything, with painting, with drawing. They all come together. Um, they all relate. So I kind of just fall on that, and then once I feel like okay, that's familiar, then I can start playing with technique more or variations of things yeah oh, so you grab onto something that you know how to do in another medium replicate yeah. that with the medium you're using get familiar with that medium and s slowly increase the difficulty level yeah yeah i believe so yeah oh that's really Those smart are better played in words <laughs> yeah uh, you were yeah. you know that's the thing about the brain you are trying to put words into feelings and that is extremely hard i am listening to your words and it's way easier for me to just grab what you say and uh, present it in another uh way than coming up with everything myself so kudos to you uh for being super clear i'm just making sure i understood that okay so uh, looking back at our audience who's uh, listening to this interview right now, what advice would you have for anyone starting with a new medium right now? Hmm. I think going with how you translated what I said earlier, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, find something that's familiar with fundamental things, mm -hmm. work from there, and then you can start playing more with that specific medium. I think uh, having things that you really, that really capture your interest, but also like maybe not too difficult. I think the more time you spend with an object that you are attracted to, or a subject, I should say, that you're attracted to, the more you wanna keep making work out mm -hmm. of it and try new things. Mm -hmm. I think just to capture your interest, I think that's the main thing. Um, because if you're not interested in what you're drawing, um, it'll, you know, eventually may, might might get harder as you kind of do it. It, may, the, it might be difficult and you might burn yourself out from trying to understand that subject. So something more simple and something that you uh, like to do, like Pokemon, I guess. <laughs> Let's all make Pokemon. It will turn this world into a much better place. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, loved it. Loved it. Um, one last thing before we sign off. Um, yeah. You did a live demo with us. I will link to that in the comment, in the in the post associated with this episode at etrelab.com forward slash pastoris. And um, you, uh, can you just tell us like super quickly what you did in that live demo just uh, to, you know, move people to the recording because it's really good and everyone should watch it. Oh, yeah, in that live demo, I did a painting of a figure, masked figure, just focusing on simple shapes you would see in a person. Mm -hmm. um, you can also apply those shapes into other uh, objects, subjects as well. And um, 
yeah, yeah. So we did a little, I did a little painting, watercolor painting of that. Um, yeah, I hope that they get to check it out and enjoy it. Um, I'm just bringing up the recordings of the live demo that Justin did, and uh, he also taught a workshop with us a couple of days ago. The recording is also available on our website if you'd like to check that out. It's up for sale, and Justin is doing a class with us. Pretty sure that by the time the podcast episode is out, it's sold out, but uh, we will have Justin back at Etcher in the future uh, for more live demos, for more workshops. So I, I just want you to know that check out his work and uh, he is a wonderful artist to learn from. Okay, before we sign off, Justin, any last words, any watercolor tips, anything you'd like to leave us with? Um, keep, keep going at it. Yeah, don't stop. Don't feel threatened by any mediums. Uh, embrace them and learn from them yeah. and that's a wrap for today's interview so what is your favorite art medium and why please let us know in the comment section of the post associated with this episode at etrelab.com forward slash pastoris that's e-t-c-h-r-l-a-b dot com forward slash P-A-S-T-O-R-E-S. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, simply let us know in the comment section below. If you're enjoying the podcast, please help us keep the show alive. You can subscribe and give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etcherlab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. Or if you're more of a YouTube viewer, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our most recent videos. Sharing is caring and every little bit helps. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Until then, let's make more art.